want to ask you and invite you to come to the Six Nations of the Grand River community. Justice and Attorney General of Canada and Member of Parliament for Niagara Falls. Now, it was mostly a flat landscape with just a couple of... At daybreak, the flotilla began to move. An American invasion fleet. There at the mouth of the Niagara River of U.S. Dragoons was then seen leaving from Fort Niagara and Dragoons. So he had almost 600 men in total. Clay bank that would have been really, really difficult to try to crawl. Now to the great relief of the British forces that were out in that field. Cover, there is nothing to shelter yourself behind. And with the amount of smoke that was created, not only by the muskets and rifles whizzing by you, along with 12 that the American forces are sending a wall of lead down the battlefield. Now, the five guns at Fort George haven't happened yet. So we're hearing some motivating talk from the American officer here. And once more, the British line is getting reinforced with fresh troops. Now, behind the British line, you'll see that we also have a fife and drum corps that had marched in from the British camp. Those musicians, those fife and drum corps units were absolutely crazy. You're not going to be able to be heard over top of any of this. Whereas the 70s, the different tunes played by the fifes and drum corps. Are making some significant headway on this that would be lined up short enemy. And when they all fired at the same time, throwing that devastating volley of musket balls down with the enemy. Some cord that we have on the battlefield, Union flag on it, along with casualties on the battlefield. Now we are getting into very close, but picture thousands of them lined up. Rifles and the big difference just a like a smooth pipe on the inside. They have like the uh, I think it's like the final battle. They were met with reinforcements in an artillery piece, but even still, the British were far out. Pays the line. Naturally, in Niagara.